I'm going to ask you to open your Bibles to the book of Galatians. Open your Bible to the book of Galatians, the sixth chapter, Galatians 6. And while you turn to Galatians 6, I'm going to open up a prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for how you continue to bless us, how you continue to keep us, how you continue to watch over us from danger seen and unseen, God. How you continue to order our steps, even when we don't know sometimes where the destination will be, Father God. We trust you and we follow you, Father God. Sometimes knees shaking, nevertheless, heart convinced that you will never lead us into temptation and you'll be there with us. Even in the valley of the shadow of death, you are with us. Even in the presence of our enemies, you prepare a table for us, Father God. Let's right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, forgive us for anything in our lives that's not like you. Forgive us for any unconfessed sin, any sin of omission, commission, or poor disposition, Father God. Clear our hearts so that we can hear clearly from you, God. Lord, now I say, open our eyes so that we can behold the wondrous things within your law. Open our ears so that we can hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Open our hearts so that this seed of this word today finds good ground, takes root, and brings about a harvest at the appropriate time that people may see the glory of God in our lives. Now let me decrease and you increase. Hide me behind the cross. Speak through lips of clay. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. These things we pray in Jesus' matchless name. Amen. Whew. Amen. Galatians 6. And we're going to read verses 7 through 10. I'm going to be reading the New Living Translation. Please follow along as best you can in whatever translation you are following along. And this is the New Living Translation, Galatians 6, verse 7 through 10. Don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest whew, what you plant. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap the harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially those who are of the household of faith. The word of God is blessed. In the book of Genesis, the 8th chapter, the 22nd verse, it, afford, it, it tells us about a principle that I really want you to kind of put in your memory bank and hold on to it. But the principle, and we put it up on the monitor if you need to see it, um, Genesis 8, verse 22. And it says that while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease, will never end. The principle is that we're going to talk about today deals with that seed time and harvest time. Seed time and harvest times. There is always going to be a time for planting and there will always be a time for harvesting. Always a time for sowing and always a time for reaping. And this is so important because we need to understand that in life we're always sowing seeds. We're always sowing seeds. Now, I'm going to get this out of the way so everybody can get comfortable, right? A lot of preachers use this to get you to give money, right. okay? That ain't what this is about. I'm, 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 God, God, God instructed me to share this particular scripture. And y'all know how I do. Y'all know y'all not going to get the surface level. Y'all know y'all not going to get the, that, that. That just tickles me that God uses me to not give you the surface level understanding. But we're going to get deep because seeds go deep and they grow and they do what they are designed to do. So I want you guys today to understand that seeds do what they're designed to do and therefore we have the ability to dictate what type of harvest we're going to get. That's exactly what we're talking about. What type of harvest are we going to get? 
it's important for the hearer of today's lesson to be fully vested in God and his kingdom and his way. Believing, as Luke 6.38 says, Luke 6.38, 6, give and it will be given to you. A good measure, 6.38. Luke 6.38, give and it will be given unto you, a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, runneth over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. That's Bible, right? It says give. That's the first word, give. It doesn't specify what you should give. It just says give. And as I just stated, we're always Given. Even sometimes when you don't think you're giving, you're giving. The time that you spend to wake up in the morning, drive to church, go back to church, that's giving. You're giving of your time that you could be doing something else. Time is a seed. You invest your time in what you want to invest in. I make the joke all the time about House of Triumph is that we're out of church by 12 o'clock. Why? Because I want to watch football. That's that. I mean, and, and it's, it's it's a joke, but every joke has a hint of truth in it, right. which is what makes it funny. Yes. But um, but 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 the point is, I invest in the kingdom. But guess what? I invest my time in watching football. There's something in that because a lot of times we invest the seed of our time in things that don't really give us any type of gain. Right. Not football. Not football. <laughs> but there's some other things like watching a lot of TV. Some of us over-invest in sleep, right? That's time. Time we can never give back, but time is a seed. Some of us give of our abilities. I, I called Nazir up to help me sing because my voice just wasn't there today, and he gave his talent and his ability so that God could use him and help with the worship service. His, his gift is a, a, a seed, um, but we have to understand that there are a lot of, we're always giving. We're always giving. We're always giving. Y'all y'all with me so far? Yes. We're always giving. And everything, I, I, I'm trying to keep y'all kosher right now because we're always giving, but a lot of times we're not always giving good seed. Okay? Right. I'm going to leave that right there. But seed time is a time of investing. Whenever you're investing. Seed time is a time of giving. Seed time is a time of releasing. It's a time of letting things go putting them out into the atmosphere. When you're seeding, you are not gathering. Have you ever seen, have any of you ever um, did any type of gardening at all? Um, maybe you just like grew like, did anybody ever grow tomatoes before? Is that, now, now, I know this sounds silly, but I have to say it so that you can get the visual. Have you ever been growing to tomatoes and have you been picking the tomatoes and putting the seed down at the same time? Don't work like that. It doesn't work like that. It's a seed time and it's a harvest time. And you have to understand that without them seed time, there is no tomato. You have to have, you have to be conscious and purposeful and strategic in your choices to sow and plant seed so that it will benefit you at another time. Seed time, harvest time. Y'all with me so far? Y'all with me so far? But this is the challenge. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta buy some seed. I have to get some seed. I have to find some seed from somewhere. Then I have to put it in the dirt, whatever the dirt is, the figurative dirt. And then I gotta leave it alone and wait. One of the reasons I hate ordering stuff over the internet is because they get my money and I don't have nothing to show for it. Then I wait and wait. And like, I like Wish, because you get stuff real cheap on Wish, but Wish makes you wait longer and longer, and you be going back to the email, you be checking your bank account to make sure they took the money, and you be waiting. And, and that's the problem with seed time and harvest time, because we want things instantly. We want that instant gratification, right? Let me, let, let me, let, let, let me, let me show y'all something real quick. Who here likes to eat fast food? I, 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 I knew I could depend on my young people though. They, I knew they would. Now, but watch this, but watch this. What are fast food? Who likes a home cooked meal? Well, everybody likes a home cooked meal. Some of the people like fast food. Everybody likes a home cooked meal. Watch this, y'all put your hands down. 
Watch this. A home cooked meal takes time. You got to go shopping. You got to get the ingredients. Then you got to get the kitchen all laid out and order all the dishes and all the foil and all the pots and the pans and that, whatever you need in order to prepare the home cooked meal, right? It takes time, it takes an investment up front. Then when you get in the kitchen, what happens? You start putting all the ingredients together. I'm not gonna name ingredients because it's gonna instantly turn into cake. That's just how I roll. But you start <laughs> whipping it up and you start cutting and you start dicing and you start blending stuff and then the aromas start to emanate from the kitchen. The people all in the house, it can start smelling what's going down in the kitchen. And there's an anticipation and there's an, an excitement and your stomach starts to growl and, and sometimes the kids will peek their head into the kitchen and they just want something to hold them up. They want a foretaste. I like that word. They just like, like if you, okay, I'm gonna go to cake. If you're making a cake, you may not get the whole cake, but sometimes, who, who loves to lick the batter off the spoon? Yeah, y'all tell the truth, y'all all love cake, just like the pastor, <laughs> go ahead. But, uh, but, but, but that, 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 that lick of the batter was just a foretaste, because you really just couldn't wait for the cake to be done, but you needed, that would just hold you over. But that's, that, that's how we are today. We, we know that there is a benefit, and, and, and when that Christmas dinner, or that Thanksgiving dinner, or that Easter dinner, or that big celebration dinner is all done, and everybody sits down, now, isn't it way better than the instant meal you would have had at McDonald's? Yes. Let me ask you a question. When you eat at McDonald's, does it put you to sleep when you're done? Nah. Something different. Something different about that home-cooked meal, but it takes time. Right. But you're willing to wait the time, and you're willing to make the investment because you know when that meal is over, yes. it's going to be worth the wait. Yes. It's going to be better than that instant gratification. Now, and, and, and so when you have fast food, Snickers messed up the whole game when they had that whole, oh, you love Snickers too. <laughs> when they had that, listen, listen, Snickers messed up the whole game because they had that slogan, Snickers satisfied. Right. They didn't know, no, you, you, I, I went back before the one you talking about, but uh, sick Snickers satisfied. Uh -huh. And everybody began to think that being satisfied was okay. Mm. But watch this, fast food made satisfied right. But that home cooked meal gratifies. Listen, satisfied means to fulfill the desire, right? My stomach is growling, eat some McDonald's, growling going away. I'm hungry, eat some Burger King, not hungry anymore. But when I eat that stuff, I'm disappointed in myself because I know eh, that probably wasn't the best thing for me. But when I have a home cooked meal, I'm gratified. So here's the difference between satisfied and gratified. Satisfied means to fulfill the desire, expectation, needs, or demands. Gratified means to give pleasure by satisfying. You see that? That one little word. When something is gratifying, there is a pleasure associated with it, a fulfillment associated with what happened. And listen to this. Many of our lives have become empty void of much of the pleasure that God wishes us to experience because we have been settling for satisfaction instead of gratification. Wow. Because we want it instantly instead of waiting till harvest time. Wow. Mess with the young people some more. So when I went to school, I know they I know they messed everything up to kind of almost it, it, it's sad for any of the educators in here that may be watching because They've messed up the whole grading system where now no kid can be left behind. But when I was growing up, you got an A, you got a B. You got a C, you got a D, they're not going to be. And you got an F, you really better like you F. But um, that was the grading scale, right? Now, when I was growing up, a C meant, the C was right in the middle. And on a scale, oh, somebody help me. Read. A C meant satisfactory. Satisfied. Satisfactory. When you got a C, when I brought a C home, my mom wasn't jumping up and down like, oh, you got a C, it's one of those high fives. They're like, let's go shopping and buy you something. You deserve a reward. But it did mean I wouldn't fail. I wouldn't be left back. I had did enough to continue, but not just set the world on fire. Satisfactory. But if I got a name, Oh, it was room to brag. It was put that up on the refrigerator right. for everyone to see. Look at my son. He's on the honor roll. We never had that conversation at my house. But I'm just using that. As a, but I heard my, they talked about my sister like that. They never talk about me like that. But, you know, but, but the point is when you got an A 
everyone under the, and, and guess what? A stood for outstanding. I don't know how they did that because it should have been an O, but whatever. But A stood for outstanding. Listen, if, 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 if I say Christian, I say Christian, I think they're outstanding. How does that make you feel? It makes you feel like instant gratification. Right. You see that pleasure associated with that. If I say, Jakai, you're all right. How does that make you feel? Look at him. He hangs his head in shame. Look at him. And words are powerful. Yes, are. But words are so powerful. But but that's why we have to understand that we have been we've been settling for being satisfied instead of gratified because we want instant gratification right. because we don't want to work the process of seed time and harvest time. Are y'all with me so far? Y'all yeah. with me so far? I hope y'all are following me. So that's the that's that's the that's that's the heart of the matter that we have to really buy into seed time and harvest time. The second half, the second half of that focal passage in Gal Galatians, the second part of it, it says, verse nine says, "So let's not get tired of doing what is good at just the right time, just the right time, not when you think it's the right time, but when God says it's the right time, at just the right time." you will reap a harvest of blessing if you don't give up. So the second part, those words you hear all the time. In the season, they write songs about it and everything. You shall reap if you pay not. You know, they, they write songs about it. Just keep doing good. Just keep like, And you hear that a lot in church, right? You know, just keep fighting the good fight. Keep holding on to your faith. Trust in the Lord. Lean not to your own understanding. Look at all that church stuff just coming out. Right. That's because it's been just... Because you just hear it so much, they force you to remember it. And it's cool. It's accurate. It's right. I don't want you to look at it the wrong way, but I don't want you to miss out on something that is also very important. Because there's a first part of this text. And the first part of the text, you probably heard this way. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. That's where go back two verses so they can see it. Don't be deceived. One more. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. There's a there, 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 there's a point in that. There's a purpose in that. Think about that for a moment. Because this is what I want. This is the part I don't want you to miss. I don't want you to miss this first part in light of the second part. I don't want you to continue fighting the good fight and all of that. I want, you, I want you to do that, but make sure you get the whole principle in context. The first part of the text tells you you cannot mock, and if you go to a different translation, it says the justice of God. You cannot mock the justice of God. Watch this. Think, of, think about that. Who would knowingly mock the justice of God? So let me... When you mock something, when you mock something, you're attempting to ridicule. Ridicule, that's strong words. These aren't my words. I did, this is from definitions I looked up. I was like, oh man, ridicule God? And I thought about that and said, who would want to ridicule God and his justice? That's why when we were doing Bible study on Friday night talking about the wrath of God, it was hectic. Because we were talking about why God's wrath exists. And it exists because there has to be a balance for those who rebel against God. There has to be, if God is all holy, if God is all righteous, and those are the words that are actually the definitions for his justice. The justice of God stands for God's lawfulness and God's righteousness. And if someone is going to be bold enough to ridicule what God calls right, then that's where the wrath of God comes in. But God says it in this passage that God is not mocked. Whatsoever a person soweth, that shall he reap. And this principle is what allows for the behaviors that ridicule God's righteousness. The behaviors that ridicule God's holiness. The behaviors that make light of God's standard balance out. Because it's already been placed in the equation. You want to mock God with your behavior and your actions? There is a time to sow, and there is a time to reap. Remember, that scripture said give. It didn't say what, it just said give. Right, right. 
It is important to understand that you will never get over on God. Never get over on God. I remember one of my teachers, she gave that big speech in front of the class. You spend your whole life thinking you got over on the system only to turn around and realize one day the system got over on you. That's seed time and harvest time. You, you cheat your way through all the tests in school and all the exams and find out you don't know nothing but how to cheat. You have just reaped what you sowed. Okay. Y'all, <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me work my way down to that part. Let me, let me work my way down there. But you can't, you can't get over on God. You can't, you can't pull the wool over a guy's eyes. There was a scripture in our Bible study. It talked about you made a mistake when you tried to pattern God after your own understanding. That you can treat God the way that you treat Joe Blow on the street. Can't do that. God is not like us. And what is done in secret, it is revealed in due time. You won't make a fool out of God because all of your seeds will eventually produce a harvest. I, I, you know what? I, 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 I must have an old soul. Old, older people used to say such smooth stuff that you would probably miss if you really didn't understand the premise. They'd be like, what don't come out in the wash come out in the rinse. I, 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 I love it. They just say, they just say some, and you like, you don't understand because you don't do no laundry. I don't know what they talk about. <laughs> but then when you get a little older, you like, oh. Eventually, the chickens come home to roost. And, 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 and all, all that, like, what does that mean? But you know, when you get a little older, it starts making sense. And just like that, eventually, everything you do, Everything you say, every this 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 must be for the young people. Every Snapchat you look at, oh boy. Every text message you send that you think you delete, every website you go on that you're not supposed to be on, eventually, guess what? It's gonna pop up on somebody searching, and it's dangerous now because guess what? When you go to a for colleges, they look at all that stuff. They look at your Facebook, your Instagram. You better make sure, I'm telling you, you think it's just fun, you think everybody else is doing jobs. I'm, I mean, I, I, I mean, man, I, I don't even, I say you're part of the message, and I don't want people, but I got you because God is waiting on me. Like, it's a lot of priests in, from Catholicism being found out to be pedophiles now, years after doing that. Like, what you do in the dark, eventually, it's going to come to light. And for my young men, y'all might as well just get it right. Just be honest, because these young females, they will take your phone and look at all your text messages, and y'all be in a bunch of trouble and stop laughing. <laughs> and y'all to keep a straight face. I like that. I'm such a troll sometimes. I just be picking on people that I know. I'm just such a troll sometimes. But, but, but it's important, because you don't want your good. You don't want all your good to be ill-spoken of. Do you, if you had a beautiful lawn, right? A beautiful lawn, and you had one weed poking up in the middle. What does that do for the whole lawn? It doesn't make it look. And I was, and, and, and I was studying as I was preparing, and, and I was looking at, I was looking at the life cycles of different things. You know how I talked about instant gratification? Do you know the life cycle? We have flies at our church sometimes. It's annoying. But do you know the life cycle for a fly? How long a life a fly exists? A fly's life cycle is from one week to a month. That's how long the fly's life lasts. And I was thinking about that because it was heavy to me because I was like, people who want to live their whole life in an instant, that's how significant your life is. What do we do for flies? We swat them. I don't want a swattable life. I don't, I, don't, I, don't want a, I don't want a swattable life. And if God is trying to build something substantial in me, I have to be willing to go through the process of being seen, grown, cultivated till I become and the harvest comes at its appropriate time. And that won't happen if I'm trying to trick God and hustle God and pull the wool over God's eyes. Everything that we do in secret, God sees it. And you won't make a fool out of God. And eventually, whatever you see will produce a harvest. And I can't tell you precisely what your harvest is going to be. That I do not know. I've known people who have smoked all their lives and never gotten cancer. And I know people who have never smoked and died of cancer. I can't, and so I cannot say that smoking causes cancer. I cannot say that not smoking causes cancer. But I know that God says, I shouldn't be putting that in my body. And I'm not trying to pick on anybody because you're looking at someone who used to smoke. So I'm not trying to like throw no darts at anybody. 
I, I, I know that I know that I, I've known people who have drunk all their life and they've ne- alcohol all their life and they never had a liver or kidney issue. I also know people who have never touched the sauce and have gone through kidney failure. So I can't tell you what your behaviors are going to produce. All I can tell you is that you cannot get a harvest of blessings when you are sowing cursed seeds. You cannot get apples from oranges. You cannot, it doesn't work that way. You cannot get blessings from cursed seeds. And listen, We all understand that God is merciful, right? God's merciful. We understand God is gracious toward us, right? We love this stuff. We understand God suffers long with us as we're going through our growth and maturation process. We understand that we serve a forgiving God, that when we stumble and fall, if we confess our sins, that he is faithful and just to cleanse us from unrighteousness. We understand that, right? We got mercy, we got grace, we got forgiveness, we got long suffering, we got temperance, we got all those things working for us. But I gotta tell you, because this is the this is the heart of the matter. That has nothing to do with seed time and harvest time. That is who God is, but that has nothing to do with seed time and harvest time. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you. My wife gets excited whenever I have whenever I have illustrations. I did this because somebody would be like, I know he ain't going to waste them. See, I always think about that. He going to waste those? Ranch. Ranch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Amen. Hey. Like, like, so I, want y'all to, I want y'all to get this because this is what happens, right? What's going to happen? I tell a lie. I'm convicted. Oh, wait, wait. I did it wrong. I tell a lie. I'm convicted. I ask God to forgive me. He forgives me. I cuss. I ask God to forgive me. He forgives me. Wipes the slate clean. Right? I still. Forgive me. I'm sorry. I repent. I pay it back. Right? Go to that website I have no business going to. Ooh. Delete this. God, what was I thinking? Lord, help me work on that. Work. Help me fix those fillings. I don't need to go there anymore. I do all types of stuff God tells me not to do. And I keep saying, God, forgive me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I really am. I'm working on it. I'll get better. And eventually I'll get better, right? And God, forgive me from all of that stuff. Why can't stay clean? But what about these seeds? What about the seeds? Because God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sow, that's what he's going to be. Just because them seeds was on the ground, they just haven't been rained on yet. They just haven't been in the dirt long enough. They haven't sprouted up. The sun hasn't shined on them so that they can produce what they're going to produce. I can't tell you what your seed and when you've given into unrighteousness is going to produce to you. All I can tell you is them seeds don't disappear. Right. Them seeds, once they are sown, they are sown. When I was growing up, I got in trouble at a young age. And it wasn't even a big deal, but I had sown a seed. Um, I think I told y'all this story before. Baseball, football, went on the neighbor's yard. I went to get it. The neighbor, you know, old, I, I was to say his name. That's how impactful it was. I still remember this man's name. I'll leave his name out of it. I'll give him no glory today. But uh, <laughs> but uh, he came out the door cussing and yelling at me, stay off my grass! Blah, 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 blah. And you know me, like your age, shut up, old man! Disrespectful, shut up, old man! That's why you're old! That's like probably the best thing I could get. I don't know what I really said. Called the cops on me. Said I threatened him. Police came to my house. I got arrested for terroristic threats when I was like 13 years old. I was a minor, so you know, I didn't, I didn't know what I didn't know. Fast forward to me joining the army. I'm down in Philly Mets getting processed to go into the military. And they're like, you can't enter, Mr. Thompson. I'm like, why? They're like, because you got a flag in your file because you made a terroristic threat. I had sown something so long ago. And then when it was time for me to move into the next stage of my life, something had cropped up. And it was harvest time. And I couldn't enter the military until I cleaned that up. Now, God is still gracious. 
God is still merciful. God is still kind. And so he allowed me the wisdom and he showed me the way to get that off my record and get it expunged so that I can move forward in life. But that seed that was sown, it had to be dealt with. And there, 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 are, there are so many other illustrations that I can use in my own life. But what, I, what, what we need to understand is that I would have never had to deal with that had I never sown the seed in the first place. When you think, I, we're, we're so blessed that God shows us grace and mercy. But you got to remember that everything you do, every lie you tell is a seed. Every disobedient Every disobedient behavior you show, it's a seed. Every risk you take that causes you to trust yourself or to trust your friends and you're not trusting God, it's a seed. And just like that, those decisions have consequences. And it's no reason to continue to kick yourself because you trusted in yourself and not God and now you're dealing with the harvest of disobedience. You're dealing with the harvest of doubt. You're dealing with the harvest of guilt when you could just trust God and deal with the harvest of obedience. you got to stop sowing sinful seeds and thinking God will spare you. God's going to show you mercy, but you're going to reap what you sow. God is not going to be ridiculed in front of all of humanity just because you won't obey. God's, gonna, God's not going to give you a harvest of, of, of blessings and his glory and you have lived sinfully. And that's not saying that you are living simply. I'm trying to get you to make sure you don't live simply. There's a difference. I don't want you to miss it. I don't want you to have to suffer from the harvest of transgression. I want you to be encouraged to stop sowing sin unless you're prepared to harvest sin. Stop sowing sin unless you're prepared to harvest sin. What, is the, what does the harvest of sin look like? What does the Bible say? The wages of sin is death. 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 Like, like death. Physical death? Yeah. But let's 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 get before we get to that point, let's talk about all the other death you suffer in. You, you ever feel like your, your, your joy is gone? Death. You ever feel like your hope is gone? Death. You, and, 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 and you ever you, you ever you ever feel like all the things you, you ever feel like you don't even know why you're here sometimes? Like purpose is gone? Death. And if you really are honest, if you're really truthful and you look at how you got to that point, you will see an absence of God in the decision-making process. A lot of people, listen, a lot of people get to that point, a lot of suicide and everything, because they never knew God. They never were raised in the church. They just were doing everything that the world was doing, going along with the, the program. And then it gets to this point where they're so desperate and destitute that they don't have any other options because they never knew God in the first place. And so they take their own life. But that's because they were sowing. They were sowing. They were sowing. And, and, and that scripture is so powerful. I picked Luke 6.38. Show it again. Because it says, give, and it shall be given back to you. And I'm just about done. Just about done. Luke 6 and 38, but I want you to see it. It says, give, and it shall be given back to you. It says, give, and it shall be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, run it over, shall men give into your bosom. It doesn't say what. It just says give. Think about what you've been given. Think about what you've been given. Have you been getting a good measure of disappointment? What have you been give, given? Have you been getting a good measure of frustration? What have you been given? Have you been giving a, have you been getting a good measure of depression? What have you been giving? Because whatever you're giving is coming back to you in good measure. Press down, running over. You got confusion in your life? Well, have, you, have you been sowing confusion? You got anger in your life? Have you been sowing anger? Have you got deceit in your life? Have you been distrustful? You are getting, you are harvesting what you are sowing. Pastor Wells shared this with the fellowship like three years ago. We didn't all stole it because it's just so good. He says, you know, you can count the number of seeds in an apple, but you can't count the number of apples in a seed. And we was all like, Pastor Wells, oh little short, bald-headed deep man. <laughs> I hope he sees that. Deep man, that's why he's a well. He's deep like a well. I got his name, he's named from, but when you think about that, one seed can produce an orchard in time. But do you think one seed of 
disobedience can't produce a garden of chaos in your life? Right, right. Seed time, harvest time. You have to be so careful of what you sow. And you have the option and the choice. What are you going to keep? Are, are you going to look at your garden? Look at your garden. You say the grass is always greener on the other side. What what turf builder are you using? What turf builder are you using? <laughs> think, think about that. You want that yard? Are you going to seed that yard? You can have a better yard if you seed your yard. Seed time. Harvest time. I don't know about anybody else here, but I've had my fill of hurt. I've had my fill of pain. I've had my fill of heartache, disappointments, and failures. I'm not sowing any more seeds into disobedience. I'm going to sow the seeds that God tells me to sow, and I'm going to be patient. I'm going to water that garden. I'm going to cultivate that garden, and I'm going to be patient because if I sow the right type of seed, if I make the right decisions, if I perform the proper behaviors, then God is obligated to bring me into a harvest that is going to resemble what I've sown in due season. I pray that you guys were blessed. I pray that you guys are inspired to determine the type of harvest that you will receive in due season if you faint not. All eyes closed, every head bowed. Father God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for this message. We thank you for this word, Lord. And we just ask you right now to help us to recognize that all of our actions, all of our decisions, they are so much more than for the moment, God. But they are seeds that determine what we will receive come harvest time, Father God. And we pray for blessings, God. We pray for increase, God. We pray for harvest, God. We pray for advancement, God. We pray for prosperity, God. But help us so that we can invest the right seed so that that prayer is not falling on barren ground, God. That it is not falling in a place that it cannot grow and be cultivated, God. Lord, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that you help us to plant and value the seed of righteousness and holiness and obedience and discipline that you have equipped us with to use and exhibit, Father God. Just the hearts and the minds of these people today, Father God. Illuminate their thought processes, God, so that they see a little further than the moment, that they desire a little more than instant gratification, that they no longer settle for being satisfied, and they move into the place of gratification that resides in obedience unto thee. These things we pray in Jesus' matchless name. Amen.